Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, we got a pretty exciting experiment. Uh, I'm going to talk about power factor again, relating to our audio amplifier, the Olive amplifier, the Class A amp. Getting back into that, another video, and we're going to build the power supply. And I wanted to kind of show you the, how power factor works, because it has come up a couple times in other videos, and I think before we understand it, like say in a power factor correction circuit, it's good to have a good idea of in a basic linear power supply, okay? So I've got this big old capacitor bank here with these bridge rectifiers on the front of it. Pretty cool board. Got my transformer. I think I'm gonna have to get a bigger transformer, but we'll talk and uh, I'll explain why, okay? Let's jump over here. Look at this circuit, power it up, and here's what I'm gonna do, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna power up these resistive loads. Do I dare touch them? I've been running things, it's pretty hot. So I'm gonna run them through uh, the transformer. So I'm gonna run power up to the transformer. On the other side of the transformer, I'm gonna just run it straight into the resistors, into the loads kind of bypass the amplifier and the powers, you know, the capacitor bank, the whole thing, okay? And I'm gonna show you why, but we're gonna do that first. And then after that, then I'm gonna put in the rest of our power supply, the capacitors and bridge rectifier to power these things up at DC voltage, okay? Then I'll run them right on the output of the power supply uh, of this power supply without the amplifier in there, okay? I just want to show you power factor, what this bridge rectifier and these capacitors do and how they change things and how they affect the size of this bad boy, okay? So I hope you learned something today. I hope this is interesting and it really makes a lot more sense in when we're talking about power factor, okay? So let's come over here and do it and then I'm going to show you the scope pictures too. All right, let's do it. Okay, so let's just go over our setup here. Input power is coming in, output power to the loads, bunch of measuring devices. <laughs> All right, let's just talk about it. Okay, transformer. We're gonna use this VA. I'm gonna zoom in on this so you can take a close look at it, okay? But this transformer gives a plus minus 25 volts out on each one of the output windings. Right here we have a yellow and orange. It's going to, you can see this 8 ohm, 200 watt load, okay? Then we have the red and black one, and it's going over to this guy. I don't know why they're crossing, but I guess they just are. So we're gonna use this hand tech, CC65, to measure the current to that load, and we're gonna measure, we're gonna use this uh, pin tech uh, over here, differential probe, to read the voltage. So we're gonna look at current voltage on one of the outputs. And they both should be pretty close to the same. Not exactly, I'm sure, but pretty close. Okay, then we're gonna use this big SIG uh, current probe, which is right here. And it's gonna be monitoring the input power. And that mix SIG differential probe comes over here. And it'll be reading the input voltage. So let's just take a look at it. The, my, oh, and by the way, and then we're gonna have our power factor meter right here power is going to be coming through and I'll plug this into this extension cord when I'm ready but right now there's no power on it so it's okay that I'm wearing all this stuff because all I'm going to do is hit the switch with one hand and take readings okay so power comes in goes through the switch this side of the switch goes through this fuse underneath here okay I think I have a 5 amp fuse in there right now and then it goes to the blue and purple. So my primary windings are in parallel. Well, we have 120 here in the States. So yeah, I'm gonna put them in parallel. If you're somewhere else, 220, 240, you'd put those in series. So the gray and brown wire then are connected to the others, the neutral wire actually. And it goes through this thermistor, this 10 ohm SL22 thermistor, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna also measure the voltage on this thermistor 
just so I can see whatever voltage drop there is there, okay? So this demister, the voltage I'm going to be reading, I'll be using this Amazon commercial 90DM600. I reviewed this in a previous video. It's a very nice meter. IP67, UL, all that kind of stuff. So that will be sitting here. We'll measure that. So here we have input current, voltage, then the output voltage and output power here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at power factor with this meter. See what our power factor is. And we're going to, from the oscilloscope, we'll be able to look at what the actual voltage looks like coming in and the current looks like coming in. And we'll look at the voltage and current coming out. All right. So hand ticks on the times 10 position. This one's times 10. The mix sig right here is in times 50. That's the lowest position I can go. The pin tech is in times 20. That's the lowest I can go on that one. Okay. All right, let's go up to the scope and take a look. So what you're going to see is I'm going to come over here and I'll show this meter. But we're going to be looking at the scope and I'll just read out the voltage I see here. What will happen here, well, you know what, maybe I'll turn on voltage once so you can just kind of watch this stuff. You know what, we'll do that. We'll look at power factor and we'll look at this voltage. What's going to happen is, is that heats up. The voltage here is going to start off high and it's going to drop off. And then it'll kind of steady out a little bit. And we'll wait for that to happen. Then we'll take readings on this just to look what input power and power factors based on what these meters are. Then we'll go over and look at the scope. That sounds like a good plan. And there's our transformer. So it's an Avalon or Avalinberg. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, our 250 VA. It's a pretty decent size for only 250 VA uh, 25 volts out so the dots are in the black the orange the blue and the violet so that's shows you the polarities of the windings um, I guess depending on where you are you wire those up you know maybe the hot side coming off the non dot side uh, in this case I'm, I'm gonna use the dot as a positive polarity and as long as you are consistent on both sides, then your phasing should be correct. So for instance, on the output side, I'm going to be looking with my red lead, my positive lead on the black. And on the input side, I'll be looking at the blue and the violet tied together. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn on the power. and You'll see things change up here. We have watts on this display right now. Okay, I'm going to just reach over. All right, so you see the voltage dropping, and that's just because it's heating up and changing temperature, heat and changing resistance. All right, and so up here the wattage isn't going to change too much because that's that's a pretty small change, but you can see it going up just slightly as it does, 175, 176 watts. Okay, now let me go scroll up on this. Okay, 1.49 amps, 6.9, okay, it's 60 hertz, and look at that, power factor is 0.999, which I would expect. 118 volts, 118.7 volts, 178 watts, 0.4. And you see this voltage just dropped down to just over 2 volts now. And it looks like it's still dropping. 1.5 amps now. Okay, 178 watts. Alright, so just go over the scope setup. We got four probes in here. <laughs> we got the differential probe reading the input voltage right here. Channel 1. And it's at the 50x position, DC coupled, full bandwidth, we're not filtering or anything. Differential uh, probe, but looking at the output voltage of one of the outputs, 20x, otherwise the same. And then we got our current probes. And channel 3 is the 
mix sig times 10 look at our input current and channel 4 is also times 10 everything else the same and that's looking at our output current on that same uh, that same load that we're looking at the output voltage okay now in measurements I've got all four channels looking at RMS current but I've also got math on and I'm doing the math it'd be nice to have two math measurements up here but I, I can only do one so I'm going to do the input power okay so power is just power it's not rated in RMS power even though that's kind of way we all kind of talk about it but the scope you have to set it up as average because that's actually what it is and then so channel one input voltage 100 volts per division uh, output 10 volts per division input currents 1 amp per division output current is 2 amps per division I'm going to try to zoom in on this screen here a little closer just a little bit closer all right I decided to zoom right in change lenses <laughs> all right here goes guys okay now I'm gonna it's eight volts right now across that thermistor I'm gonna let it drop again and we'll compare our kind of final values that were dropped down around two volts so it'll increase our output power just a little bit and our input power will kind of match up not really important for this test but what the heck let's see what happens all right you can see 112 volts rms coming in uh 25.3 volts rms on the output 1.45 amps rms current coming in and three just about 3.03 3 amps rms out on an 8 ohm load and the input says about 163 va 163 watts okay we're at two volts across the thermistor right now and that's our settings i'm going to go ahead and freeze the scope and we'll do some math okay with 112 volts rms input and 1.46 amps rms we get about uh, I don't know if you can see that okay I hit the multiply button and that's 163.52 and what we see here is 163 okay so then on the output we have 25.4 volts and 3.04 amps RMS so 25.4 3.5 hit the multiply 77 watts but that's two times right we have two channels so two times 154 154.4 so hey we're losing some power right we lost about nine watts okay guys so now we're putting our bridge rectifier fire and capacitor bank in and the way we do it is black the dot is up on one end and then the red and orange are in the middle so they'll go in the middle on the ground or the return or whatever you want to call it and then the yellow at the bottom okay so it's laid out just like that across here so each one of these guys has two diodes in it so the two of them together make up our bridge rectifier and we'll get our negative voltage on this side see the stripes right here and we'll get our ground in the middle or return in the middle and our plus on this side okay so now you can see the big change <laughs> what we have is our same thing power still coming into the input of the transform just like it did before nothing's changed over here okay but now the output instead of going directly to resistors now what we're going to do is we're going to transform that ac output power to dc voltage right to actually a plus minus dc output so we have bridge rectifier here with these two big diodes there's actually two diodes per so so these two guys here make up a bridge rectifier so we come through here and then we're gonna have our big old beefy caps here and then on the other side we have our resistors hooked up all right guys from this side you can see our output our two center pins are our ground so each resistor has a lead tied to that and this resistor right here one of them's tied to the plus one's tied to the ground this resistor over here one's tied to ground and one tied to minus you can see these little poly caps on the output too. This is a nice little assembly. 
I'll, put you know, I'll put a link for this uh, if you guys want to pick one up. This is actually a pretty good deal. Was, I think around $35. I've had it for a little while. But you get four 10,000 microfarad caps for each side. They're rated at 125 volt. And as far as I can tell, they seem like they're pretty good uh, capacitors. I'm not sure if they're Toshiba. They're HCG is what they say. FAs. Yeah, so I don't know who... It looks kind of like a Toshiba symbol on the side, but anyway, I don't know. Uh, and, you know, the LEDs for each side, pretty nice little setup. All right, guys, so otherwise our setup's pretty much the same. We still have our our meters over here that we're going to read their input volts amps, okay? And then we're going to uh, look at our scope. All right, so just for precaution, I also wired up another meter. I got this Greenlee meter looking at the output so I can make sure I'm going to get my AC and DC voltage, you know, it'll show me a ripple and it'll show me the DC voltage here. Just make sure everything's good as I power up. And as a safety note, it's always good to double, triple check something like this with all this energy you're going to get in these parts and hooking up AC power. I don't have my Variac, so I'm going to have to just hit my switch. So I I look at this, you know, three, four, five times even, and then I think about it, look at it again before I hit that switch. All right, guys, got my blast shield on there, safety glasses. I'm standing way back, and I'm going to reach over and hit the switch. See the LEDs turn on. Meter says 30.6 volts. Okay, that looks pretty darn good. Whew, okay, always a little nerve wracking plugging that in for the first time. Um, all right, so now that little confidence level is built up, I'm gonna bring you over and we're gonna look at the meters turning on, okay? You know what, guys? One thing I wanna point out quick, see right here, no load, 120 volts. So I'm dropping some voltage across my leads here. Uh, I need to beef up the gauge of these wires. I need to get some nice heavy wires. We're gonna talk about that in another video too. What gauge of wires do you need? Okay guys, so let's go ahead and take the power now. Take these readings. Okay, we got about 30 volts on our rail. A little bit of ripple, 0.7 volts, 0.4, kind of dropped down. Oh, it's still dropping. And this voltage is going up, so the caps are charged up. We got a little bit of voltage drop across our thermistor. Have 118.4 volts, so we dropped just a little bit of voltage across our stuff. Okay, let's go down 283 watts. It's going to go up slightly as this drops. 284 almost there. 2.9. It's going to go up to 2.99. Let me go through the readings and we'll come back through it again. 60 hertz. Look at that, 0.79. It's going to be about 0.7. 0.798, okay? 0.797 is what I'm in right now because it's going to drop down there in a minute. 118.6 volts. It's, it's getting close to 2.99. It's going to reach there in a minute. 0.799. It's going to go to about 0.797. And 118. 0.2. It's going to go up slightly as this drops a little bit. 118.6, I think, is where it settles. And we're right about 182 watts. 183. Okay, so let's fire it up and see what happens. I saw some inrush there. We're going to capture that on the next video, I think. Okay, I'm going to freeze the video right there. And there we go. If you can see, that's 120 volts RMS input current, or RMS voltage. Input current's 2.88, I think that says. 
and output voltage is 30 volts and it's uh, 3.79 amps okay and then the VA or input power is 201 VA and I put RMS just to show you how bogus it is 461 so it's not RMS power it's it's a uh, it's average mean okay. all right guys hey guys so what do you think of that was that uh, that was pretty cool right here let me just kind of put it all together with this really busy board don't worry unplugged so I'm not gonna cause a, an explosion or a short back here <laughs> all right I got a busy board going on sorry about that and I didn't drop two circuits because too much stuff going on first circuit was just the power cord I had the switch fuse the mister and my primary windings in parallel since I'm running at 120 60 Hertz if you're not you'd have them in series and otherwise the output windings are like this and what I did the first test was just put 8 ohm loads on each winding the windings are rated at 25 volts RMS with 115 coming in so since we have closer to 120 it's going to be a little bit higher and I think we saw that right we saw more like 30.5 volts RMS coming out okay let's just look above this line for now when we did this circuit, what we got is input power is 163.52 watts. Output was 154.43 watts. That was, both of these combined came up to 154.43. The power factor is pretty close to 1. It's 0.999, something nuts like that. So essentially 1. And... The efficiency, if you divide 154 by 163, comes out to 94.4. Pretty efficient, right? Not bad at all. So we're going to lose a little bit of power in the windings on the transformer. Current's coming through them. We're going to lose a little bit. Probably lost uh, some on our thermistor too, of course. Because, all right. So yeah. So with the if we had two volts and some current, we're losing some. Uh, efficiency there too right we're losing some power the more current the more you lose just ir i times r uh, people refer to that as ir losses you know voltage losses or i squared r losses power losses and it's just your connectivity in the circuit you're going to get some losses but 94.4 is not too bad 154 watts well then what we did is i took that that rectifier with that capacitor bank and tied the transformer into that and so we had the rectifiers here then the capacitors and then our eight ohms on the other side of that so all right guys so this is the new circuit the bridge rectifier and the capacitors and eight ohm resistors are here just to show you what that looks like that rectifier capacitor board basically gave us a plus minus 30.5 volt output okay so now let's come down this section okay uh, what we saw on the scope was about 30.5 volts RMS and 3.86 amps uh, that's 117.73 watts but since we have two of them it's about 235.5 watts that was our output power about 235 instead of 154 so adding rectifiers and capacitors we actually boosted our power we actually got more power out that's pretty cool now well, let's continue here on the input on the scope it said 120 volts rms and 2.97 amps rms the power meter was a little bit lower 118.6 let's say volts rms and 3 amps rms so pretty darn close but a little bit different uh, anyway that comes out to 355 VA not watts VA the current volts aren't traveling at the same time together they're not traveling together at the same time they're they could be out of phase slightly um, there's distortion both those things create what we call power factor that means that what we see at the input is only apparent you know if you take the voltage reading and current reading you go apparently I've got this much power well 
in reality, it's, it doesn't work out that way. What the meter said is 283 watts. It, you know, these measurements are kind of fluctuating a little bit, so I rolled them down at a, at a certain point where I saw 283 watts, real power. Power factor said I rounded that off about 0.79. So, okay, well, if we go 283 watts, real power, if we look at efficiency, we go 283 watts and 235.5 watts on the output, that's 83%. 235 divided by 283, 83%. It dropped down from 94. Well, you know, like I say, IR losses, right? A lot more losses. Plus, we have diodes in the circuit now. Those diodes are going to create some losses. And even the ripple current through the capacitors, the ESR of that's going to have a little bit of losses. So, we got more losses. But we got a power boost. <laughs> so, you know, it's less efficient. But we got more power out of it by doing, by changing it, converting it to DC. So that was pretty cool. Okay, let's get back to this power factor thing. Well, at the transformer, the transformer is saying I got 355 watts coming into me. No, no, no. VA. That's 355 VA at the transformer. Transformer only knows it has 3 amps coming in. That 3 amps, it's not really rated for that. It's rated for 250 VA or 250 watts if it was like in this scenario. But with the power factor, with the current voltage shift or distortion and or both, you know, our power factor dropped down to say 79%. We're only getting 79% of our power transfer and then we're losing another 83%. So what you do for power factor, it's this 283 watts real watts divided by the 355 VA and that's 0.79 that agrees with what our meter said so that's the math now if we look at what we got for output power versus what we had to put in it's only 67 percent so that's what power factor does or you know and by the way did you notice those current spikes instead of a sinusoidal current, the current was not traveling, then a pulse of current. So that current, if I look back here over my shoulder, I can see it went up six amp spikes. So if you go back and look at that waveform, you see it goes all the way up to six amps. And then nothing, then six amps pulse. So you're getting this big pulsating current. Well, it's not the same shape as your voltage, so they're not gonna be in phase together and there's going to be some distortion too because of the, the edges, okay? Anyway, that's the story. Alright guys, just a real quick kind of, hopefully this makes sense. I don't know, it's kind of messy and my drawings aren't so great. But I've got three different waveforms here. Uh, power is equal to voltage times current, right? Voltage is in black. Um, current's in red. And then I kind of try to draw what power might look like on each one of these. On this one, the black and red, the voltage and current, sinusoidal and in phase. They both cross zero at the same time. They both peak at the same time. So you get your peak power when the voltage and current are peak and zero power. And power is always on the positive side, right? Power is always positive. All right, so in this case, power factor is equal to one. If you put 100, if you need 100 watts out, you put 100 watts in, 100 watts, 100 watts. Whatever you get in, you get out. If you need 100 watts here, the current is out of phase with the voltage. So the current's at zero when the voltage is at max. And then the current's at max when the voltage is at zero. So you end up getting these little peak pulses of power. And, and this isn't to scale or anything like that. And I'm just saying it's approximately 50%. So let's say 100 watts out for each one of them. This one, you're going to need about 200 watts in to get 100 watts out okay current's going to have to be like double the value because when the currents peak the voltage is zero so when the currents say halfway up the voltage is halfway down so you know so roughly current's going to have to be twice the value so if that's the case your transformer in this in these two cases transfer here could be 100 VA to put out 100 watts 
Over here, it's going to have to be a 200 VA to put out 100 watts. Okay, over here, this is really different. Now we got a rectifier, so now current doesn't flow until the voltage comes up high enough to be above the value where the capacitors are charged at that moment. And when they are, diodes turn on, you get a pulse of current, pulse of current, pulse of current. So you get a pulse of power, a pulse of power. So these current pulses, since you're only transferring current during these sections, between here and here, there's no current flow, so there's no power. Well, so that means you're going to have to say have, you know, 3x, 4x the current. Uh, so now your transformer over here has to be, even though current's not flowing during part of the time, well, when it is flowing, it's I squared times R. So the resistance of the winding, I squared times R. So it's a square root thing. So it's, it's significant. And it'll heat up those windings. And even though they get a cool off in between, they're going to get heated up again. And the other part of that is that R in those uh, windings might drop the voltage down, which means the current has to go up even higher to compensate if you're trying to pull 100 watts out. So you can kind of see how this, this power factor is even worse than this one. Because in this case, uh, your VA is, you can imagine, you're going to need a, a big VA out here. So really, I'm just kind of showing 50%, 50%. I don't know what it is. You know, it's it's just kind of a visual for you. Uh, but, you know, we I think in this example, we saw around 60%. So anyway, just hopefully this gives you kind of a visual and maybe a better understanding of your power factor and why it affects your transformer. Not only your transformer, but your diodes, right? Diodes are often rated for high peak current, so that might not be a problem. But still, the diode has bulk resistance inside. So the more current going through it, the more voltage drop. So if you look at the voltage drop on a diode, it's higher during higher currents. So again, more losses, okay? And also... The wires, the copper on the board, all that stuff is going to be affected by this. Not only that, you're going to have more noise in a situation like this. Because you're going to have these sharp edges. And if you imagine putting a whole bunch of sine waves together, some natural frequency, to try to generate something that looks like that, you know, it'd be difficult to do. You're going to have harmonics, is what I'm saying, some high frequency stuff. So, yeah. Power factor is affected by not only the phase shift and the voltage and current, which I'm showing between these two, but also in the noise generated. Uh, you take those things into account when you uh, come up with a power factor, right? And usually the noise part doesn't play into a sinusoidal transfer of power. It happens when you're switching. So we call these linear uh, power supplies, right? But you're going through diodes that are commutating on, off, on, off. Well, that sounds like a switching power supply. <laughs> so it's a linear power supply, but it does have switching current. It's pulsing on and off. So it's a low frequency switching power supply. <laughs> it's one way to look at it, right? Okay, anyway, so hopefully that gives you a, you know, a visual of power factor and the meaning and how it impacts your circuit. Uh, your fuse upstream. You're going to have to have a fuse that can allow that kind of pulse current to go through. Well, in a situation like this, the current's going to be less, right? So you can have a fuse that's a safer fuse for your circuit because you don't have to let so much high current go through. In this case, you're going to have to let some pulse currents go through without opening up your fuse. So, yeah, it impacts a lot of things. And that's why power factor is a big deal. Anyway, so, yeah, I hope this gives you a better idea. If you're at a bench powering this power supply, you're going to need a transformer of more than 100 VA, say two or 300 VA. You're going to need an AC power supply that can provide that too, unless you're just running off the wall outlet like I am. But I'm going to get my Variax out of storage, and I have, my Variax will have to handle that higher power just to power this 100 watts over here. So, power factor, big deal. My 250 VA will not give me my 235 watts. 
efficiency says I need 283, but then power factor says I need 355. So you really need about double the size of transformer just at the output of your power supply to get the power you think you need. And now we have to take in consideration the efficiency of our you know, power amplifier. If we were driving a class D amp, which is really high efficiency, well, that's one case, but if we're driving a class A that has very low efficiency, so let's say if we're only trying to get 60 watts out, well, let's say it's only 50% efficient, we need 120 watts, you know, per channel, right? And then, and then we have this power factor thing happening. So we need to go 240 VA per side. So we're gonna need a 500 VA transformer, I think. So that's what it's looking like, right? All right. I hope that makes a lot of sense, guys. I hope that helps kind of give you a picture of sine waves in, sine wave out, great power factor versus rectifier capacitors causing pulsating current which throws the power factor all out of whack and instead of a one you get a 0.67 all right hey guys uh the old thumbs up helps the videos a lot and i'll see you next time thanks patrons for all your support thanks everybody for watching videos and wow 5,000 uh subs that's crazy huh all right, thanks guys. We'll see you next time.